Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Unleash Your Power. This is Jeffrey Pinson and I'm super excited to be here with you guys today. Thank you for joining us. We have an amazing podcast in store for you guys. Today, I have the great pleasure of interviewing a person that I've been a fan of since I was like 16, 17 years old listening to his music. This gentleman is a phenomenal human being. He has an amazing talent when it comes to singing, writing, and the way that he captivates the audience. He is a father, a devoted husband, and today, not only is he gonna share his success story with us, but he's gonna inspire, uplift, and motivate others to be, do, and have more for their lives. So without further ado, please help me welcome the real Frankie J, man. How's it going, man? Thank How you, are you, man? Hey, man, thanks for man, having this me. Is, this is a pleasure having you, man. Oh, man, pleasure They would have told mine. me 10 years ago that I was gonna sit down and interview Frankie <laughs> J, I would have not believed it. <laughs> and look, we're, we're in a barber chair. Yeah, we're right and we're here. having coffee, bro. Exactly. You drink coffee? Absolutely. Oh, yes, dude. yes, yes. It's the best, and it starts your, it kicks off your day, and for me, it makes me feel better. It gives me the energy. Absolutely, I agree. I <laughs> so agree. thanks for having me, man. No, no, it's thank you for taking the time. You. I know that you have a busy schedule, and you're, you're doing a lot of things right now, and you taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down and contribute, that means a lot, because I know that a lot of people that are going to be watching this, this podcast, they're going to get a ton of value from your story and from everything that you're doing right now. Uh, thank you. So, if you could tell us a little bit about who you are, your upbringing, so the people that don't know you, they get to know who Frankie J is. Oh man, well, who is Frankie J? Well, I consider myself a very humble uh, human being. I, I've, I've uh, worked uh, very hard um, to get to, to where I'm at today uh, because of my uh, upbringing um, as a kid. My father and my mother taught me to work hard in anything that you did and to always put 100% into uh, what you do. If this is, you know, if whether it's uh, art, whether it's music, whether it's a sport, whether it's anything, mm -hmm. uh, you just have to do, go go after it. Take, you know, grab the bull by the horns and don't even look back. So um, I'm grateful for, uh, for them to, you know, teach me these these uh, these fundamentals these these uh, you know morals at the same time right. and, and uh, you know to sh paving the way for me paving the way my father um, you know he basically had two three jobs um, when he was younger and you know had to uh, you know provide for six of us and um, you know he was just a very hard hard worker he was a hard working man uh, my mother was as well. My mother uh, also had her job. Um, you know, we, didn't, we, we grew up poor. We didn't grow up with, you know, all the, uh, the riches of life or nothing like that. You know, we grew up in a very humble home. Uh, my Where did father. You grow up at? Well, I, I grew up in. Uh, I actually, I was born in Tijuana. Okay. I was born in Tijuana, and um, I only lived in Tijuana for about maybe three years. And crossed into uh, to the United States at the age of, of three and believe it or not man it was on a Halloween night it was oh, a man. Halloween night my uncle uh, gave us a ride uh, one day uh, well, actually it was during during the evening time uh, in Halloween October 31st of 19 I want to say it was 80 no 79 it was 1979 and uh, Back then, they didn't really um, ask you too many questions, you know, crossing the border. <laughs> and it was my brother, my older brother, who was four years older than me, my older sister, who was two years older than me, and one of my uncles, crazy, because uh, our uncle um, is kind of like a brother to me because he grew up in the same age bracket as us. My grandmother and my grandfather had a, had a late bloomer. Um, <laughs> And uh, it was it was kind of a, a, a crazy, crazy thing that happened when we were, you know, very little. My uncle crossed us. Uh, we were dressed up in our, our Halloween costumes. Wow. And we just crossed to go trick or treating. The uh, officer just asked my uncle, "So what are you bringing?" You know. So you didn't you even know Mexico. what you were doing. No, I was I was <laughs> not, I don't even think I was three years old. I was maybe like two and a half. And um, so, you know, we, we were able to cross the border 
we went trick-or-treating, never went back. Wow. And we stayed in, in San Diego. But, uh, but yeah, you know, born in Tijuana, raised practically uh, all my life in, in San Diego, California. Wow, okay. So yeah. What made you get into the I music? Think and... As a kid, I, I, always, uh, I always loved music. Um, you know, listening to the radio, listening to uh, all the songs that were playing back then on the radio, watching TV, watching videos. I was always intrigued by the videos. Uh, obviously, Michael Jackson being one of the first artists that I, uh, you know, really, really got into uh, because of the, you know, his style, his swag, and what what he was doing. He was basically conquering the world at that time. This was mid '80s. Um, so as a kid, I would see all these different, you know, things that all these artists would do, and I wanted to be like them, and I wanted to sing like them, and and I wanted to you know, do what they were doing. So I fell in love with the art as a kid. I fell in love with, you know, um, basically the art of music. And I just never let that go, never let that go. And of course, I didn't know what I was gonna do uh, getting older. I just knew that I had something within me that, um, you know, really triggered music in my heart. My, my father used to sing when he was younger. He used to do, you know, tardeadas in Tijuana. That. Tardeadas were like you know certain you know festivals and parties that they would have that, that would happen in Tijuana and where people would go and just enjoy you know themselves with you know their family their friends um, and uh, you know he would do that with some of his buddies they had just a band that they would do covers uh, they, they would perform also like at house parties uh, quinceañeras weddings so. You know, and then my grandfather was um, always always played an instrument. He always played the uh, violin for the church. So music was already already instilled in, in in the heart of our family. Right. So obviously, it had to have come from you know from the from the core. You know, mm -hmm. from there. So um, yeah, man. I guess you know, as a kid, I just I was meant to you know to do this to do music. Do music, absolutely, absolutely. So once you got you you got into the music, you started pursuing it. When did you when did you say like you know what this is something that I'm gonna go all in? Uh, this is something that I want to pursue as a career, uh -huh. and I want to be able to de develop a future with it. At what point did you know that this was something that you were gonna go 100 percent in? I'll be honest with you, man. I was always a very shy kid. Okay. I was a very shy kid. Um, I loved singing, but I didn't want people to know that I could sing. I was in eighth grade, and you know, this is junior high. I was sitting um, in the front uh, of the classroom, and one of my good friends, I still remember her name, Amabel. Uh, her name was Annabelle, Annabelle. And you know, she could sing, and she had an amazing, amazing voice. And uh, I remember, um, you know, singing, you know, singing, um, you know, in classroom while we were having a break. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, she caught me. She goes, hey, is that, that, that was you. And I just, I remember looking back and I was like, no, that's not me. I, that wasn't me. <laughs> but she goes, no, 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 that was you. You were singing. And she goes, wow, you have a great voice. Why don't you ever use that? Like, you know, why don't you try, you know, recording or, or you know, doing something like, you know, with music, and I was like, you know what? I go, because I'm shy, I don't want, you know, back then I was like, I don't want to perform in front of people, you know, they're going to make fun of me because I sing, and she was like, no, you know, you, you should definitely sing and, and do something with it. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And I remember at the age of 14, I was like, well, I, what can I do, you know? How do, how do I use this, you know, how do I use my voice? Um, you know, to, I don't know, to express myself. And uh, at the time, um, my older brother had a, a, a friend of his that was doing music and he had a studio and he had access to a studio and he was writing his own songs. And so I remember um, going to my brother and asking him, I said, hey, you know, introduce me to one of your friends that does music. And he said, sure. 
and one of his uh, good friends was a, a guy named Fernando Felix mm -hmm. from San Diego. He was, um, you know, in high school still doing music, and he introduced me to him, and I sang for him, and he goes, we're going to record something together. So right after that, I was 15 years old, you know, recording in a, in a four-track four uh, Tascam machine and hearing myself for the first time recording in a, you know, uh, what was that with music. Of hearing so, yourself. You know, I, 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 when I first heard myself, I think I sounded like a chipmunk because my voice hadn't, as it hadn't been developed yet. I was still, you know, I had the, um, as they say, the purity mm -hmm. <laughs> voice. Um, but I remember laughing at myself because I was like, that's not me, that doesn't sound like me. I, I sounded like a chipmunk. I, my voice was thin sounding, mm -hmm. but there was something about it that I really enjoyed. Um, and of course, hearing myself in a cassette, back then it was a cassette, the tape, you know? But um, I loved it, man. And, and the first time that I heard myself, I was like, wow, this is really cool. And the next step was, to perform it in front of people. So, what was, was that like? like? Since you're, you're, you're a shy person, you don't like singing in front of people, and now you're gonna perform in front of an audience. Uh -huh. Well, you know, for me it was like, okay, I need to perform in front of my peers, how do I do that? And I remember at the time, um, I was, um, this was already back, you know, fast forward to maybe, I, was, I think I was a sophomore in high school. Um, one of the ASB advisors came to me and he goes, hey man, I, I heard that you like, you know, to sing and, you know, you have your own music, would you like to perform, you know, during lunchtime? And I was like, kind of scared, you know, but I said, ah, what the heck, I'll try it. And uh, I knew that, that one of my buddies, uh, you know, Fernando, that was helping me also would have loved to have performed, so I invited him uh, to the lunch uh, event. He brought his sound, um, and he was like, yo, I got the tracks, don't worry about it, we'll perform together if you're afraid, we'll do something, you know, where, you know, if you feel comfortable, I'll go on stage with you and, and we'll perform together. So I kind of, you know, and when he told me that, I felt a little more, more comfortable in that piece. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, I'm gonna have someone with me, I'm not gonna be alone, I'm not gonna feel like I'm by myself. So I decided to, you know, to take a stab at it. And lo and behold, man, uh, when I performed, my peers were super amazed. Wow. They were cheering me on, and that was the very first time that I said to myself, I could do this for a living. I could really do this, I, you know, I, I love the feeling of you know, my my own friends like cheering for me, clapping, screaming, yelling, rooting me on. They got that taste. And it was the taste of of, uh, of the very first, um, you know, essence of being in front of a crowd. So after that, I, I, I always went up to my advisor, the ASB advisor, and said, hey man, can I do it again? I want to perform again. And so <laughs> right after that, I, I just kind of got like into it. And all that's of a how sudden, it all started. Now you lost the shininess and everything. Yeah, no, and, and that was uh, that's how it all kind of unraveled for me. And I loved it, man. I just loved having that that feeling of going on stage and singing my own songs and seeing my friends like cheering me on. It was cool, really cool. Nah, I I could tell, man. I could mm. tell because you you're speaking with passion and everything. Oh man! So I could tell that you did. You're, you're talking about it like it just happened yesterday. Oh, I can, I can, I still remember it like it was yesterday, man. Yeah. I still remember it like it was yesterday because you'll never forget that first feeling of anything. Right. Like when you first drove a car or, you know, when you first, you know, bought your first pair of sneakers, that, that's the one, the ones you wanted. So for me, it's like smelling that fresh pair of, 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 of sneakers that you were like, wow, I've been waiting for this, you know? Right. So I still remember everything uh, of that day. And I will cherish it, man, because it, it really did make an impact in my life. And obviously, it is probably one of the main reasons why I do what I do today. How important is to keep that feeling? How do you 
continue despite everything that's going on right now, everything that the years that have have passed. Right. How do you still keep that well, you know, feeling? I, I don't think it ever it ever went away. I mean, every single time that I go on stage, it's always that same feeling, that wow feeling, that you know, you feel the butterflies in your stomach. Of course, you feel nervous, but at the same time, you feel good. You know, there's always a little bit of nervousness that goes on inside of you. Because it's normal. It's normal to feel that way. Because even though you know the, you know your fans are gonna love you, the people are gonna love you. There's always that. I gotta do something to, you know, make maybe push, push yourself uh, to. How can I explain it, man? It's. it's I mean, at the end of the day, you, you, it always feels good, no matter what. So right. you never lose the feeling of that. But it's important to keep to keep yourself mentally ready physically ready and spiritually ready because you're going out there to give it your all and uh and it's a really really nice feeling man it's a really cool feeling so it just never gets old never gets old what are some lessons that uh, that you've learned in, in your journey being in being an artist being, being an artist being, being an artist being in the music industry because i'm sure that there's a lot of things that that you gotta go through yeah I mean, I think one thing is is about surrounding yourself with good people. Good people, people that are in there for, you know, to be your friend. Um, Because in this industry, there's a lot of fakeness that goes goes on. I mean, there's people that just want to attach to you because of what you do, who you are. There's people that want to mingle with you because they feel like they're going to get something out of you Mm -hmm. there's people that are just there to be seen with you because someone else is gonna oh you know you're a cool dude or you're a cool girl or just because you know so you have to watch out for those kinds of things and i learned that the hard way um you know being young naive uh, and thinking that everybody was your friend at the time uh, taught me a, a big lesson and taught me the, the the truth. Taught me that not everybody that that you, that is in your circle are really your friends mm-hmm. or are really true people or, or people that are really there for for the right reasons. So I think one thing that you have to you know you have to learn is is how to differentiate people who are true friends and people who are just opportunists. Um, and man, that's that's. I think that's probably one of the one of the main things that I would tell anybody who is just you know learning or you know brand new in this industry, who is gaining success, who is you know moving up the ladder, uh, as as you would say, uh, to really di- know that the difference between you know friends and acquaintances. Right. Um, so that's definitely one thing and then I think um, another thing that, that I would say is is the business learn the business you know you have to watch out for sharks in the industry sharks in the industry are all over the place man so I would say you know keep your eyes open man at all times you know you can get so caught up in your world you can get so comfortable at, at, at times that you can allow, uh, you know, people to just come and take a bite out of you, right? And make a dent in your in your business and in what you're doing, and could really really affect you, you know. And my, and at that moment in time, you might not realize how big of an effect it's taking until you see it, you know, in the future. So until it compounds, right? Yeah, and, and and I think that that's something that we need to watch out for. And I would I would definitely advise, um, you know, the, the the you know people who are trying to get involved uh, in the industry to really watch out for those kinds of things because it can it can definitely um, make you or break you, right? So who has been like some of your biggest influencers in the in the industry that, in the industry? that, that supported you and letting you on that right path? Oh man, um, I'm trying to think of who in the industry. Um, well, as far as artists, 
or artists, producers, producers, yeah, songwriters. Um, gosh, I don't know, man. I mean, there's so many. Um, I think for the most part, the people that are my friends that I can call friends, um, and people that are real with me and that have, you know, one way, shape, or form given me, you know, um, when they give you advice, you know, uh, good advice, I want to say is, um, you know, my brother Ronnie Bryant, man, he goes by Baby Bash. Um, he's always been, you know, him and I have had a really, really cool friendship for years. And we both have, have been under the same management. We both have been under the same labels and separate labels. And both have gone through our, our trials and tribulations when it comes to the business. Um, we tend to, to really talk, uh, you know, about looking out for each other, man. And, you know, I think that's probably why a lot of people always, when they, when they hear songs from either of us, they connect us. Right, right, right. Um, and also the fact that we've had, you know, a few hits together. Well, big um, hits. <laughs> and, you know, and, and they always think... You know, if they think of Frankie J, they think Baby Bash. They think of Baby Bash, they think of Frankie J, and and we just kind of always had that 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 connection. Um, he's, you know, I consider him, you know, one of the realest in, uh, within my circle. Um, another one is is uh, the girl that I just mentioned to you guys um, that I just literally got out of the studio with. Her name is Paula Diaz. Mm -hmm. She's always been a real, real. Um, real person and you know there's there's only a few people that I can you know um, you know if from the industry that I can say you know those guys are really really real people so I gotta ask Frankie uh, who has been your biggest influencers in your life um man I gotta say my father I gotta say my father because and I'll tell you why because He's always worked very, very hard all his life to maintain a family of six. And I saw him work himself to the bone as a kid to where, you know, he physically got hurt at his job and, you know, hurt his back and uh, couldn't, couldn't uh, you know, couldn't work like how he used to um, but he still went at it and worked after even after he got hurt but no excuses no excuses man he always had uh, this crazy you know energy and strength that he anything that he did he always had to uh, basically get out of like if he got himself in a hole he would get out of it or if he saw that there was a challenge, he would go and basically defeat that challenge. So he taught me to never give up. Uh, he's always been a man of his word. If he says he's gonna do something, he does it. Uh, he was always, um, you know, very, uh, when it came to his mindset, he always basically said, I'm gonna do it, no matter what. So it taught me a lot as a kid, seeing that, uh, having that as an example as a kid I mean to me it's like wow it's like becomes your hero right you know? your superhero right. so I mean you know there's a lot of things that um, you know were done that I you know where he would see as mistakes but I never held anything against them because I always said to myself like if he's gonna do something and he's gonna you know he's, he's gonna own it you know he's he's gonna admit to his you know to his flaws or mistakes but he was always a man of his word so i always i always saw that in him and, and um, i definitely have to say my father because he was always a hard work how important is hard work for you and how has that been a, a result of your career well i think it has to be a, a dedication thing like if you're gonna do something, go at, go do it 100%. Don't go 50% on it. You gotta go all the way. 
So I always put a lot of dedication to everything that I do. Like you said, I just came out of a studio session. I was right. there practically for almost seven hours. And I drove from San Diego wow. to be at this studio session. I recorded with my good friend Paula DeAnda. Was there, you know, basically vocal producing um, the session and dedicated my, my all to make sure that I got that done. You know, I, I always have to take everything that I do seriously. Right. And uh, so I, I've always applied that example that my father has, has taught me as a kid to, you know, to anything that you do, apply it, apply yourself to it. And never use excuses. Right. Um, and I've always done that since, you know, since I can remember, since, you know, doing studio sessions or, you know, touring, uh, I mean, you name it, right. and everything that I do. Is there anything that you've done in your career that you regret? I don't think so. I think everything that I've ever done in my career or what have you done has always been for a reason okay what have you sacrificed for your career oh man i think one of the biggest sacrifices the biggest sacrifice that i've ever experienced in my career has been i don't even think i've even mentioned this to, to, to anybody is not having the chance to have been there for my son when he was born. Wow. It really hit me hard and I, I just remember being in Monterrey, Mexico with the Cumbia Kings having to go on stage knowing that my wife was pregnant and about to give birth. And you're part of the lead vocals and you're touring and you're doing shows how do you get out of something like that? So, I'm sure there would have been a way to do it back then, but I was just so green at that time that, you know, I didn't, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't get out of it. Mm -hmm. So, that's definitely something that has always hit me. Even, even now that I'm thinking about it, I, I still, you know, get a little choked up about it because, you know, you, wanted to be there for you. Absolutely. First child. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Who wouldn't want to be there? Be born, yeah. You were but doing you, you were you were doing something that was for your family. That was for my family, absolutely. that was to obviously to provide. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was tough. It was tough. You know, for me, you know, from music, because I already have a platform, because there's a fan base and a following, um, what else can I do? to increase my opportunities and, and you know, taking advantage of, of, you know, different things that, that I can expand on with when it comes to my brand. So the clothing line, the merch, all that stuff, uh, for me, I think it's, it's a very important thing to do as an artist. Right. Uh, so I, I've, uh, I have a, a friend of mine who's my compadre actually, his name is Jose. And it's crazy because his last name is Uriarte, so that's, you know, Arte, Art. Uh -huh. And he's the one that designs a lot of my logos. I mean, we go back and forth with ideas, and he goes and, and draws everything. Uh, sometimes I even take time to draw, you know, ideas and, and send to him, and then he'll, you know, make them better, you know, make them bigger, better, whatever. Um, and and that's how we we communicate uh, and, and put you know our, our, our minds together so um, you know he develops the logos knows how to use you know the computer uh, when it comes to like Adobe Photoshop and all that stuff illustrator and hooks it up and now he's become my my partner when it comes to the business uh, of the clothing line so so you um, have the clothing line what else what, what else are well you I have the clothing line now okay. I'm also doing coffee mugs because I'm a big coffee drinker. 
And of course, my fans know that because they see my, my live Instagrams and Facebooks when I'm drinking. How many coffees do you drink a day? I, I you know, it's funny that you mention that because a lot of people think that I, 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 that I drink, you know, five, six, seven, eight co- uh, cups of coffee, but I don't. I, I normally just like to drink two cups of coffee, one in the morning and then one in the afternoon, just to keep myself, you know, um, caffeinated. It's I not guess. those big, big cups though, right? No, <laughs> you know, I actually had to take one right now. Yeah, I mean, I had a, I had a cup of coffee in my hand earlier. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, simply because I am a little tired and we've been, oh, we've been working all day. But uh, normally it's just two cups of coffee a day. I don't go beyond that because then I'll start doing this and become all jittery and stuff like that. But uh, but no, I, I, I love coffee, so I decided to design a, a coffee cup, and which will be out pretty soon. Um, I'll obviously, you know, you guys stay tuned because it's coming soon. Yes. Um, but yeah, just doing doing those things, man, just to keep myself entertained, to keep myself busy, and to give some, you know, more stuff to the fans, you know? The, in Publico, you know, the, the, they're the ones that keep me going. So, really, really cool stuff. That's awesome, man. That's awesome yeah. that you're keeping yourself busy and you're, you have you're, to. you're growing, you're contributing, you're always coming from a place of contribution. So, that's that's, that's amazing. That says a lot about you, your always. character, and the way that you carry yourself. That's why me talking to you, this, this, this short interview that we're having, man, I'm getting to know you a little bit better. And Jonathan is let me know that, that you were open to do the interview. Like, I was nervous until at the beginning of the... Because uh, I didn't know... Uh, <laughs> you to be nervous about yeah, you don't know man. about celebrities or anything, but man, you, you come across a humble guy. And, and, Thank you. And that, and that shows a lot about you know, who you really are. Also, I also, you know, want to wanna tell the people that, you know, of course, you know, we do a lot of, a lot of cool things for us, you know, as artists. And we do, you know, obviously, you know, create opportunities, you know, business and stuff like that uh, also for ourselves but I also like to give back to my community I like to give back to you know to people so I mean I love doing um, you know things that that will help you know the communities and and, and go out there and really um, you know go speak to some of these you know young kids who are aspiring artists uh, who you know are you know trying to reach a goal you know right. and following the dream uh, in anything, whether it's music, acting, being a doctor, being an architect, you know, being an accountant, being, you know, a journalist. Uh, I mean, I like to go out into the communities, man, and really, you know, um, just help, you know, help inspire some of these kids who, um, you know, want to do something of themselves. So, you know, as I know that sometimes, uh, um, you know, there's people that see us as artists and they're like, oh, those guys are always doing you know, things just to benefit themselves and, mm-hmm. you know, they, they do they really, really go out there and really, you know, talk to the youth or go out and help the communities? I, I do. I really do. Um, that's a, definitely one of my passions as well is, is, you know, doing stuff for, you know, those those kids who, um, you know, might have a question or two about how to make it. Right. You know, and, you know, I always tell the our- kids, I always tell the kids, you just got to believe in anything that and basically in what you want to do leave in it have a passion for it uh, do it and go 100% don't ever get sidetracked just because you know somebody might have a different opinion about what you want to do um, if that's what's in your heart go for it now and you just have tunnel vision on your goal you're going to make that goal a reality and you're gonna make your dream a reality so don't ever let nothing stop you um you're gonna go through humps in life but at the end of the day you have to be strong you have to be courageous and get over that so go after your dream go get it make it happen if you believe it you'll achieve it absolutely you heard it here thank you so much for tuning (laughs) in i hope you guys have an amazing day and get a ton of value if you haven't registered for the podcast, please make sure that you guys register because we're going to have a lot of more people that are going to be bringing value to all of you guys. And I hope that this inspires you to be more in, and do more for your family and for all the people that, that you're pretty much doing everything for. So, Frankie, 
thank you so much for once again for taking thank the you, time, Jeffrey. brother. Thank you, Jeffrey. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate the opportunity. I know that it's midnight. You gotta go home. Yeah, and man. Look. I gotta go drive back to San yeah. Diego. That says a lot about you, man. Appreciate everything. Of course, man. man. My pleasure. And shout out to Jonathan. Jonathan boy, Deluxe. Jonathan, you yeah. best barber in the business. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there he is, dude. He wanted to be a barber. Look, he got his own shop. It's the best in the business. The best in the business right here. All right, fellas. Awesome, guys. You guys have an amazing night. Take care. Hey, what's up? This is your boy, Frankie J. Don't forget to watch Unleash Your Power with my brother, Jeffrey, and subscribe.